The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hi, I'm Pastor Marty Ringer, and thank you for joining us here at St. Mark Lutheran Church for another great Sunday service. Now, with joy this day, we wait for the one who is coming, the arrival of the Messiah. With all of our strength and being, let us worship the Lord of love and the Lord of joy. I pray that this service and sermon is a blessing to you. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Lord, your word says rejoice always, but we would rather salt and mourn about the things that don't go right. You call us to rejoice in your glory, but we prefer to rejoice in our, ourselves. Forgive us, Lord, and hear us as we confess our sins, saying together. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ and by his authority alone, know that all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. We light it and the candle of hope again as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again. Today, we light the pink candle of joy to remind us that when Jesus is born in us, we have joy and that through him, there will be everlasting joy on earth. This is the day to have joy in the Lord. But in the gospel, John the Baptist warns us that salvation demands more than just our joy. We must repent of our sins. We can rejoice because God has promised us that our mourning will turn into dancing and our sorrows will be turned into joy. Now, hear the gospel of our Lord, as it is written in Luke, the third chapter, starting at the seventh verse, down to the eighteenth. And we say, Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowd that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to rise up children to Abraham. Even now the ax is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply, he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed to you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusations, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectations and were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I am is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong on his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winding fork is in his hand to clear his thrashing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. And we say praise to you, O Christ.
my brokenness I've got true love instead of pain This freedom, oh, you've captured me I've got joy instead of mourning There's beauty, there's beauty in my brokenness I've got true love, I've got true, true love instead Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for another Sunday. Another day, Lord God, to just give thanks to you, Lord God, your grace, your mercy, Lord God, what you have been doing for us, Lord God, and the, the things that you are continuously doing for us, Lord God. Lord God, I ask you right now to remove me from this pulpit, remove me from this space, Lord God, and allow your Holy Spirit to enter, to speak an encouraging word to your people. Lord God, I thank you in advance for all of your blessings in your holy name. We all say, Amen. So as always, happy, happy Sunday, beautiful people. You know, not just St. Mark, but just everyone who is listening right now. I'm not sure if you're listening in your car, at home, on YouTube, or wherever you're listening. Thank you for joining us today. You know, and it's interesting because today we're still kind of talking about John the Baptist. If you followed along last week, it was uh, the voice crying out in the wilderness, making the path straight for the one to come. And we're here again, in a sense, doing the same thing, but a little bit, a little bit different. You know, this time John is, it, well, 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 I'll say it like this. I, when I was working on this piece, I... Sometimes, I'll, I'll be honest, I'll ask questions, really questions to myself, like, why, why is this still here again? Why are we reading this again? Or is it something that I need to, to, to pull out that we kind of missed last week? You know, because we know about John the Baptist and a few things that we, we, we sometimes we assume about John the Baptist. You know, like for... for one thing I think many people assume that John the Baptist invented baptism. It goes along with his name. He might have trademarked it, but yeah, no, baptism was way before John the Baptist. It was really way back in, 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 in the Old Testament where they were cleansing things. Either you can cleanse it by the fire or you cleanse it by water. And some that will be transformed into the Jewish faith, they would be baptized. So this wasn't something 
knew. But what John was trying to tell people to, to do is not just get, not just get wet. Not just have some water splash on you and you, I'm good now. He is reminding them that you have to redo your mind. Redo that mind. And you know what's funny? That's the hardest thing for us to redo. And it's so interesting because for us, for us, God gave us something that was so powerful. God actually gave us something so powerful that he does not even control. He gave us will. He gave us free will that he said, I, I control everything else, but I give you free will. Free will to follow me and the free will not to follow me. John is saying, use your will to change your life. Now, let me, let me, let me bring some things back to, to, to so we can kind of connect for a second, okay? So, I was asking the question, why is this coming up again and again and again? Because for one thing, we all know faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. We got to keep hearing things because, see, what happens is when we hear things, we have these two brains, right? We would say the big brain, the high brain, and the low brain. But we know the conscious brain and the unconscious brain. The conscious brain that's awake and the unconscious brain that just kind of pushes us forward, that makes us drive our car without us thinking about it. Allows us to do things that we don't even think about, you know, like, I don't know, uh, chew people out. I, I'm just thinking about, you know, sometimes you do that without even thinking about it. Like, should I use my good words? You know, and sometimes somebody will catch you off guard and you'll be quick to say, what? I'm sorry. Anyway, but this, this unconscious mind, which we will call our wheel, this willpower, and what we have to do is be cautious of what we're putting in because a lot of things that go in are not coming back out. When you start telling yourself, this is not my season. When you start telling yourself, I do not suppose to have. You're telling yourself this all the time and it's hitting that top part of the brain and it's sinking on into the bottom part that controls that automatic wheel that all of a sudden you just believe that you do not supposed to have. We start believing that nobody's supposed to love us. We start believing that we will never achieve because we keep saying this and keep saying this and keep saying this. And John is telling us to reprogram this. We program the information and it's, it's, it's a blessing with this one that John is doing something that a lot of us do not do. Parents, ministers, teachers, coaches. John is doing something that a lot of us miss. A lot of us will say, you know, you, you need to do better. And we leave it there. We don't give the proper tools of what you need to do better in the areas. We'll also say we we need help. But then we won't tell them where we need help at, how to help, what to do. John is going through each one of them, the crowds. He's talking to the soldiers and saying, well, well do your job fairly. Don't extort money from people don't abuse your authority he's talking to the tax collectors this is how you change the small things I am sitting here telling you that the small things that you can do today can help you have a better tomorrow a lot of us will say 
you know what? I, I'm going to just be real. Sometimes I say this, all right, because I don't want nobody to think that I'm speaking about them. I say this sometimes. I want to change my life. I want to write a book. I want to write some stage plays. After I get finished playing this game on my phone. Ooh, I don't made it to the next level. Ooh. Or I, I have all these visions of this business. Oh, what's on the news? Let me watch this for the day. We have a tendency to want to change. But we have a tendency of staying the same. We want everything else to change. And John is telling us again to repent from what you're doing. One of the ways is be cautious of what you're feeding your brain. What are you feeding that brain? And even more so than that, when you say, I want to repent, when you say, I want to change from my ways, John, I'm listening to you. I know some of them went back and didn't do anything. A lot of them left that Jordan pool and just went back to the college and might have said, that was a good message. Some of them, most of them probably did not fully commit to the change. A full commitment. Some of us, I think we do that same thing that we hear a good message and we're inspired for that good hour or 30 minutes. We're on fire in the inside, ready to go out, uh, but uh, we just go maybe tomorrow. It's a little cloudy today. It's foggy outside. Tomorrow might be a little too, a little too cold, so let's look at later on in the week. Or it, it, it's towards the end of the year, so why don't we just push that on over to next, next month, to the first of the year. Can you make a full commitment to yourself to make a change? Can you really make a full commitment? And we're not saying you're changing the world tomorrow. But even some of the smallest changes in your life to be a better servant for God. A better gift to your community, to your family. One of the scariest things that I would say for me in life is to be an unfinished gift. A gift that never delivered. No name was put on it. And didn't even get cared about. A lot of us have a whole lot of gifts in us a lot of us won't change our lives to fulfill these gifts a lot of these gifts I would say in probably in heaven's storage closet labeled unfinished gifts some of us got unfinished blessings up there also where we asked God for things and we said we really wanted and then we lost the faith and did not work for it and didn't keep the will to follow it through. And the blessing just never did arrive. Brothers and sisters, I'm asking you to focus on the change. That repentance. Because see, if we really listen to what John was telling them, the kingdom of God is here. The one greater than me is coming. 
for you to really be a part of this kingdom. Repent from your way of thinking. Repent from the approach that you're taking in your thought process. Because Jesus is coming. And, and like in the scripture here, he's coming with an axe. He's coming with the axe shifting the weeds shifting. But a lot of times I think when we hear this, we think that he's doing it with the masses of people. But no, he's doing it with you. Inside of you, he's still trying to shift. The things that you don't want in, that you're trying to repent from, that you're trying to turn away from. He's trying to shift that stuff out. But at the same time, like I said in the very beginning of this. God gives you everything the ability to do all things through him but you do have the will you see you can get knocked down and people can come give you a hand to get up but you still have to have the will to give, get up you got to have the will to see a better day you got to have the Wheel to be better. Cleanse yourself with the true blood of Christ. Say, God, I give you my life. I do want to change. Show me what I do wrong. Correct it. Shift from me what is wrong. Correct it. Cleanse me, O oh Lord. I want to be better. You want to be better. Let's start today. Not tomorrow. Let's start today. Working on that new life. That new mind controlling that wheel and what we put into that. God is here for us to guide us to that kingdom. Let's just be obedient and continue to do our best to be the best for him. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, I thank you for giving us the free will, Lord God, but also give, being patient with us, Lord God, when we choose the wrong things, Lord God. Lord God, we just love you for your patience, your grace, and your mercy. In your holy name, amen. to bless the name of the Lord because he's been good and he'll be good even until the end of the earth we just want to bless him and we want to invite you to come bless him with us wherever you are just bless the Lord because he's been good and his mercy endureth forever come bless the Lord Certainly I'm not.
not perfect. I don't think anyone is. But God expects us to make mistakes. And so we rejoice in him because he's been so good. And we'll praise his name. But you know, I wish men and women would praise his name. So all that men, all that men would praise his name, would praise his name to the end of the earth. All that men would praise his name. Rejoice in the Lord always. Joy is here as we await the Lord Jesus coming into the world. So let us join in prayer for the church, the world, and all those who are in need. Let us pray. Lord God, we are filled with joy because we have hope and peace that you have sent your son for all that believe. Help us to be the voices that proclaim grace and truth. Fill us with your spirit that we might be part of the building up of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we walk this Advent journey, help us to open our eyes to the joy that surrounds us. Grant us the courage to experience joy, joy in the face of apathy, joy in the face of sorrow, joy in the face of uncertainty. We pray for the joy that is found in Jesus, that those who seek it may truly find it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh Lord, lay your loving hands of healing on all those people who struggle with health issues, who grieve over the loss of loved ones. Hear, O oh God, these prayers and all the other prayers we offer to you in our hearts at this time, especially those on our prayer list and those we lift to you in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, let the brightness of your glory shine upon us and in our hearts. We raise our prayers to you, O oh God, in the name of the one who was and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have just a few announcements for today, so be sure to watch the video announcements at the end of service for any additional information. Join us Tuesdays at 7 p.m. for our new Bible study called Fact Check. We will research and uncover real biblical facts to see what the word really says, not just what you heard or not just what someone else told you. We do a deep dive into the scriptures. So if you have any biblical questions you're confused about, email them to St. Mark Church Lutheran at gmail.com. Now we have returned to Sunday in-person worship service here at the church, and we will continue to do our online worship service, and we will fellowship and share communion together at the church in the new at the table worship experience. So come out and join us here at St. Mark to get a message in the meal. 
Now our stewardship campaign begins this month and everyone is asked to consider what you will offer to the church in time, tithe and talent to support this faith community. Now we have some great ministry goals coming up for the new year and we need you to offer your time, tithe and talent to reach all of those goals, not for our glory, but for God's glory. We ask you to support the ministry and mission of St. Mark, blessing God's work through this congregation. So to all our members and those who join us weekly online, if you have been blessed by this ministry, bless us in your giving through your online banking, cash app, Venmo, or the U.S. mail. And we thank you all so much for the gifts given back to God. Let us pray. We offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given to us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by God's grace through faith, let us confirm what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week, find that change that you want in your life and start working on it. You don't have to change the world, but you can change just a little bit today to make tomorrow just a little bit better. Go in peace and serve the Lord. <laughs>